So saints, I want you to really think about the, the, the power of Jesus in the cross gave you a restoration of provisional miracles, provisional recovery, and also provisional wisdom. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says that you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he became poor, that through his poverty you might be made rich. So there's a grace that makes you rich in this life that's legal. It's safe grace. It's not demonic. It's not evil. It's not wrong. It doesn't lead you to hell. And it's the will of God. This grace is carrying the will of God to make you rich. And so the Lord, even in the cross, sanctified a specific flow of his power that deals with your money. A sanctified flow of his power that deals with your provision, your supplies, where you live, what you have, and the experiences you partake of. Now, saints, if you take taking notes, I want you to write this down and remember this. There is a financial light that everybody has when they're honoring God. And not everybody has the same dimension of light. The light is understanding and revelatory uh, receptivity. It's what you could receive and what you know is truth. Not everybody has the same level of light financially. So would you look at the word and say that Cain has the same light as Abel? No. Now the light is actually guiding what type of manifestation you walk in in finances. This is amazing. So if somebody has small light, they'll have small manifestation. If they have big light, they have big manifestation. The truth of the matter is you have to understand the harvest before you could even properly sow the seed. If you don't understand the harvest, it's impossible to sow the seed because the seed is empowered by harvest knowledge. Without harvest knowledge, you're, you become incapable to sow. So saints, what places ambition mostly in a woman when she's with her husband? Do you know that woman will want to be with that man more times than once if she has a desire for the harvest of a child? You know why? Because her mind is thinking about a harvest. So now she's seed minded. She wants to be in the activity that produces the child. Well, the same way when you are understanding the harvest and when the concept of the harvest is revealed to you, you start comprehending, oh, I need to use the seed more. Since that's what happened to me. I told you, I had got into situations. I could have bought places. I had enough money to buy certain places. When I, when, when I went through the situation of not having money, I literally had sold everything that I had. And I escaped the temptation to use the money otherwise. I used it for sowing. You could place a demand on God and surround God. And challenge God. Malachi talked about uh, testing God with the seed. It was Malachi that introduced this doctrine divinely. 
Before Malachi, the children of Israel, the Israelites didn't understand this. But Malachi came and said, thus said the Lord. The Lord said, try me now in this. See if I open up the windows of heaven. I want you to challenge me. Fight with me. My goodness. Saints, the Lord like when somebody is fighting the good fight of what? Faith. See, it's not a demonic fight. You're not fighting with God saying, why not me? Why this going through? Why this happening? That's not the fight. This fight is not an evil fight. This fight is the purest fight you could have. This fight is the fight to say, now, I want to experience the life that you created me to live, the path that you created me to walk, the personality you created me to have, the mindset you created me to think in, the words you created me to speak, the deeds you created me to do, the harvest you created me to reap. You could fight with God in the purest form and receive the highest dimensions of increase, manifestation, and stewardship entrusted to you. Say, you notice the man with the five talents there asked God for five more. This is so profound, man. Matthew chapter 25, the man that got five more talents there asked God for five more. The man that got two talents then they asked God for two more. There is a realm where God is studying the sower and God is deciding you need some more because I'm watching who you are to me. I'm watching what you do to me. I'm watching how you're diligently seeking me. These people then they ask, Lord, I need you to increase me. Lord, I need you to lift me up higher. They had God tell them, I'm giving you more. I want you to have more. I want you to taste more. So saints, if you take a note, write this down. Sowing is a convincing grace. That concludes that I am now ready to be promoted to more. Sowing is a convincing grace that concludes that I'm ready to be promoted to more. If you take a note, write this down. The harvest will never be smaller than my giving. And sowing does not decrease my living. The harvest is never smaller than what I'm giving. And my sowing does not decrease my living. Man. So this Let's go to Psalm 66. Look at this in Psalm 66. The thief don't ever want somebody to flow in money coming. Because then the thief has to render and recompense you back for all the stolen goods. The thief don't ever want money coming to materialize in your life, but it's too late. Money cometh is more than a declaration. It's a deliverance for the mind. Your financial concept is demonized without money cometh. My goodness. Did you catch that? Your financial concept is demonized without money coming because the Lord has to teach you how to profit. I 
Isaiah the prophet was taught a doctrine that God teaches you how money works, how money is released, how money is discovered. Because in Isaiah 45 verse 3, he said he'll give you the hidden riches. Wait, wait, wait. That means that I need to discover this one. It's hidden. Now, everybody walking in this, but for people that are operating in being led by the spirit, they'll find this riches. And then Solomon talked about the wealth transference. In Proverbs 13, you see now, now Solomon has the doctrine of wealth being transferred from people that do not love God. People that are worshipers of Satan, when you start operating in God's kingdom of heaven's power to sow, you'll reap wealth transference from sinners. This is a part of men giving into your bosom. There is wealth transferences on the path of you sowing into the Lord. If you're taking notes, write that down. Wealth transference is scheduled on the path of honor. Wealth transference is where the Holy Spirit takes over a wicked body that is possessing riches and wealth in abundance and causes them to find interest to give it to me. Wealth transference is where the Lord places his power on the ungodly to shift finances to you. Wealth transference is where the Lord, he himself pits his hand on a sinner and causes them to do what you did to him. You honored him, he make the sinner honor you. Now, if you take a note, write this down. You right now are the major influence on your invisible investors. You are the major influence on your invisible investors. The investors that you can't currently see in the physical realm. You are the major influence on them right now. So if you sowing, that's your investor. That's, that's what you're influencing your investor in the future to do. If you wrestle with God to sow, that's what your investor gonna have, that same spirit. Your investors are learning from you telepathically right now. That's what a lot of people don't recognize. Your investor is going to be a complete copycat of how you reacted to the seed principle. Wow. Wow. If you're taking those, write that down. Your investor is going to be a complete copycat of how you reacted to the seed principle. So if you reacted to the seed principle with scorn, you sometime it, well, that's, that's, how your, that's, that's, that's how your investor gonna be. Your investor gonna have the same mindset that you carry towards giving. So if, if you give to God with an angry spirit, you imagine somebody, God gonna tell them to take you to a store, they gonna be like, when you gonna be finished? Hurry up. I ain't got no time. No, you're not getting all of that. No, pit that back. Give me, no, only this. No, no, I ain't paying for that. Because that was your spirit when you was giving. No, I ain't paying for that. No, I ain't giving now. No, I ain't blessing that. No, I ain't doing that. No, when, when this gonna be finished? No, I ain't into that. However you are to the presence of God in your sowing approach, that's how your investor is going to be in their sowing approach to you. That's powerful. So that's why you need a prophetic anointing in all situations because even before you get to your promised land, you are deciding the experience you have with people that God sent to you. They're going to take on the same attitude. If you give grudgingly, 
when you get grudges, after you give, you're like, man, I shouldn't have did that. I regret that I did that. If that's you, when somebody gives to you, they're going to regret that they gave to you. They're going to be grudging. You know what a grudge does? It, it holds bitterness, animosity. It get upset. It causes like, I need revenge. I need to be paid back. I need justice in this. I was done wrong. Well, when people bless you, they're going to try to come back to you and say, you know, I, I, I will. You know, I, I, I need a refund. The investors are going to take on the mind that you have today. That's why God loveth the cheerful giver, because now it's not just that he's enjoying your right heart, but now he can impart that right heart. You have given him the authority to cause that right heart to enter into your investors. Wow. When you have the right heart, you just open up the portal for God to fight for you as a man of war, to position their heart with the same hypnotic realm, to hypnotize their heart with love. That's why God love it when you are a cheerful giver because you got the right approach to sowing. So now everybody that's scheduled to give to you going to have the right approach to giving to you. The amazing thing about the seed is that it has more than one harvest in it. Every seed, if you're taking notes, write this down. Every seed has more than one harvest in it. You could sow a seed in obedience to God and it can have a harvest in it for you to be delivered from a car accident that's scheduled for you in 72 hours. That was the evil that was on the earth. Ecclesiastes 11 said, you give, you don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. I remember um, there was many people in my ministry that after they sold, when they got into a shooting incident, the gunmen didn't shoot them. They could be walking into a, a public place. They could be walking down their block. They could be walking in around a bus stop. And when the shooting take place, the bullet don't touch them and they don't get hit. Because that was the evil that was scheduled for them. There is always unknown evils in a person's life. But sowing deals with the unknown evil. Sowing deals with unknown evil. The seed is always carrying multiple verdicts of victory. You don't be knowing what's fighting you and who's fighting you. Nobody knows everybody that's fighting them. That's what a plot is all about. A plot means that something is hidden from you. You don't know about it, but it's going on against you. When you sow, you release angels to go deal with watching fallen angels that are plotting against you to wreak havoc on your life, to cause trouble and turmoil and disaster. You cancel disaster with sowing. Now, the harvests of God, in the harvests, God will give you the leverage to pick harvests that you like. The wonderful thing about when you adapt to honoring God, he has already reserved a place in his personality to honor you. With God honoring you, he's not going against things that you dream about. He is now partnering with you for the dream to come to pass. Now, saints, if you if you got a dream to meet Ray Charles, come on, baby, come on, baby. We're not doing all of that. If you got a dream, you do, man, one of my heart. I name one of my seed. I'm gonna meet Ray. I'm gonna meet Ray Charles. Come on, baby. 
We not doing. How you going to meet Ray Charles? So you want God to... That's why a sower must be also receiving the, the, the seed of the word into their heart so that you don't captivate insane desires, insane titles. If you're not in the spirit, your naming of seed will be foolishness. If you're not in the spirit. You all know that you're in the spirit of naming your seed because sometimes what you name your seed is completely to, to, to be dead to who the enemy wants you to be and what the enemy wants you to do. You want to be dead to that. You, you will know that you're in, you're, you're, you're in the spirit of naming your seed because you'll recognize you, you'll have seed names that will kill you like it take the focus off you sometimes. Imagine getting a seed name that it, it, it don't have nothing to do with what you wanted to see right now. Like you having sharp pains in your body. You're like, well, I'm naming my seed for this. And God, like uh, name your seed deliverance from uh, deliverance from um, envy. And you're like, what? Deliverance from envy? Who I envy? I don't envy nobody. Meanwhile, you envy everybody that you see ain't got no pain in their body. You envy everybody that's not going through what you're going through. I'm the only one going through. I'm the only prophet left. It's 7,000. Envy could be inside of you. So when you're in the spirit and the Holy Ghost tell you what to name the seed, the Holy Ghost is testing you too. You better name that seed what he tell you and not what you feel in the moment. Don't name the seed what you feel in the moment. Now you can receive that. You can receive that. You can make your petition known. But I'm saying when the Holy Ghost give you a seed name, keep it there, even though you might not find no significance in yourself. Why I need to put a demand on this? Because I, I need this more urgently. No, no, no. You need what he telling you to name it. The sower must understand the technology of sending the word. You don't always have to be in a uh, a tax office to get a debt canceled. You can send a word. You don't always have to be with that person for them to get healed. You can send a word. The sower must understand the technology of sending the word. Sending the word of harvest will cause that harvest to bounce back to you. You're not speaking in vain. The earth was created by God to heed the sower's voice. Remember what God gave to Adam the seed, have him sow it, but now he's subduing the earth. He's, he is the speaker, the prophet of the atmosphere. So when you are sower, there's a prophetic mantle that you have to send the word. Do not retract back. Don't refrain your speech from sending the word. Send the word daily with joy and with revelation and understanding of what you're doing. For sowing and reaping to work, you need the spirit of prophecy. You need it because you need the testimony of Jesus inside of you so that when Satan send wind 
to blow away your interest, your focus, your consistency, your desire, your cheerfulness, your willingness, that when Satan does that, you can overcome. You'll need the spirit of prophecy to see, no, I'm not going to trade in what God has scheduled for me to have for what I'm feeling right now. I'm not going to trade in what the Lord is about to cause me to live like for what I'm living like right now. I'm not going to trade in what I see around me. Stop letting them five cockroaches talk to you. Stop letting them five ants that's walking in the kitchen talk to you. Stop letting that mold around, around the sink talk to you. Stop letting that broken air conditioner talk to you. My God. Stop letting that broken air conditioner talk to you. Stop letting them holes in your socks. Send the word and the word will run swiftly and it will accomplish what you sent it out to do. If the sower learned to send the word, things that you think is further in distance will happen in the now. If you learn to send the word, sometimes you got to wait longer because you won't send the word. My goodness. Imagine waiting longer for something that was waiting to be activated by your mouth. Your mouth had the movement of the miracle. Your mouth had the manifestation of the money. That's why the word of God saying Proverbs, uh, is, is that Proverbs 12? But somewhere in Proverbs, it says the tongue of the wise is a choice silver. The tongue of the wise is a choice silver. You understand that? The tongue of the wise Imagine the Bible saying that your tongue is a choice silver. You know what I mean? If your tongue is a choice silver, that means that your, your, your tongue has a financial ability in it. Your tongue is a choice silver. Now, now why is choice silver so important? Because it's talking about choice. That means that you choose this level of silver that you want. You choosing the silver. The silver not choosing what it want to be. You choosing it. It's a choice silver. I get to choose what level of silver I want here. Imagine your tongue is a choice silver. So that means that you got money in your mouth. You are the original divine fish with supernatural money inside of it. That's Proverbs. No, no, no. That's Proverbs 10, 20. So if your tongue is a choice silver, remember the fish had that money in its mouth. You are the original money in your mouth carrier. Now, I want to talk to you about this because now we want to go into the ministering spirits that move with money. Whatever you claim in money, you can have it. Like if somebody got this bizarre amount, say I claim $20 million, you could do that. But just know the Holy Ghost going to work you up to that dimension. So be ready for his instruction and what he asks of you. And, and sometimes what he going to ask of you, it don't have a financial theme to it when you look on it, look at it from the outside. So the Lord say, don't, don't, don't go over here and talk to this person. And you say, no, no, I'm going to go talk to her. No, no, no. That is, that is that level of million dollars in this instruction. 
So what God telling you right there is, is the millions of dollars in what God telling you. Wow. So, so God may tell you, um, I want you to go sleep at this time. What God telling you to go to sleep at this time has that million flow in it. Now, just think about it. Sleep, sleep is like taking your body. Like, how is that going to make me a million dollars? No, no, it, it's you're not going to make millions just because you some uh, uh, crafty, overworking souvenir. No, you're going to make the millions because of instructions. So, so when God start giving you instructions and say, uh, pray for about 20 minutes right now. I want you to pray for about 20 minutes. Don't look on your phone. Don't look. Just want you to pray and seek me for 20 minutes. And, and you don't do it. That, that's an instruction. The Lord tests your heart with what you claim with your faith. Wow. If you claim anything with your faith, he going to give it to you. My God. He going to give it to you, but he going to test you so that you could fit the requirement for receiving it. Because it's, it's, not, it's not fair to God for him to give you that level of millions and you're not going to meet the criteria for those millions. God can't give you millions and then you go buy a hood nigga. You go buy a hood nigga. You know, most hood niggas, they, they, they'll get with a woman if you're going to pay for them. You done bought you a hood nigga because you got millions. I don't think people be really thinking. You don't want a hood nigga and a female or a, or a male. Because at the end of the day, you dealing with somebody with a hood mentality. That means that they're going to steal from you. Because that's a hood mentality. That means that they're going to betray you. Because that's a hood mentality. That means they're going to disrespect you. Because that's a hood mentality. That means that they're not going to listen to God to love you. Because that's the hood mentality. There's no love. Also, that means they ain't going to take no shower. That's a hood mentality. Saints, you ever walk past somebody smell like cigarettes and you wonder, how is this woman with him? How is this? How? You don't want your man to be smelling good? Huh? You, you, you like smelling musk? I'm not talking about Elon. Don't think about it. Says you ever you ever walk past somebody and they they walking with somebody right beside them and you like you start glitching. You can't even get your work. You sound like a Chinese person singing on American Idol. Since you ever walk past somebody and then you accept the mask mandate. I'm going to start wearing my mask again. I'm not scared of no COVID. I'm not worried about no COVID. But I am scared that I might pass out the next time I walk past something like this here. Because I almost lost my footing just now. As you walk past some people, you get lightheaded. You. you freeze. You walk past some people, you, you almost pass out because you held your breath so long because they want to stay beside you. <laughs> Since you ever had a brother talk to you and you don't know what been, you don't know what been going on in his life. Because, brother, how you smell like this? Silence. Silence. <laughs> Silence. Silence. 
I, now, I don't want no excuse or nothing. How you smell like funeral home, huh? How you smell like dust, thrust, and bust? Huh? Huh? Crust, lust, fuss? Make me want to fuss. Say it's just a little jokey joke. Don't think for one minute when Legion poured up on Jesus and dropped down. That's how you know Jesus love. Because you know Legion smelt like something. He smelt like the region. Legion smelt like the region. Huh? Huh? I bet you ain't never think about that. Le <laughs> Le 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 Legion was out there for some days warring with himself, cutting himself. I'm telling you, demons will have you crazy. Legion ain't take no shot. Legion ain't know what no water smelled like, no none. He ain't know what no soap was, no no frankincense, no myrrh, no none of that. So say, think about when G when Legion got set free, <laughs> and, then, and Legion started saying, "Come on, hold on, Jesus, I I won't go with you, Jesus. Like, oh, no, you stay right here. You need to learn here." No, because I, 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 no, we smell like Frank and Sesson Murray, and you just, <laughs> I know, I, 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 hey, I set you free in the mind, but that, them pits, them arms and all that, it's just, you, you're going to have to learn because the, the demons had your mind. You imagine him talking. Look what Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4 says. It says, the soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. You see, the Lord said, oh, it didn't say the body. It didn't talk about the outside. It says the soul. Now in your soul, what goes on in your soul? Fantasies, imagination. <laughs> Fantasies, imagination That's what's going on in your soul <laughs> So think about this <laughs> If the Lord is making your soul fat That means that in the harvest God starts to feed your imaginations If you're taking notes, write that down In the harvest, God begins to feed your fantasies. Because if, it's, if, it's, if, if he's making the soul fat, the soul is receiving food from God and food is provision. Meaning he's, God start providing for your soul in the harvest. You got to recognize when, <laughs> when the Lord provided for your, your, your body, your body, and he's giving you just what you need, right? Just to sustain you. But when he, when he's providing for your soul, now is is for satisfaction's sake. <laughs> uh, oh my God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God. Lord, I receive all financial power and abundance and wisdom from you. Say that. Lord, I receive all of angelic ministry that you have sent for my provision. Lord, I receive supernatural money. 
Lord, I receive your love and care towards me. Lord, I receive you taking care of me. I receive the grace that you have given me to sow my way out. I take it. I take it. I'm going to live in it forever, Lord. Even when you make me a millionaire, even when you make me a thousand there, even when you cancel my debts, when you heal my sicknesses and diseases, I'm still going to honor you. I'm still going to worship you. I'm still going to praise you. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to go inside of my big old closet and be silent before you and listen for your voice. And I ain't got to hear nothing from you. I'm going to wait right there until you want to talk with me. It don't matter where I am in life. I'm going to stop everything I'm doing to spend some time with you. I ain't never going to be too busy on no vacation. I ain't never going to be too busy on no cruise ship. I ain't never going to be too busy on no jet, on no airplane. I ain't never going to be too busy on no beach. I'm going to spend some time with you every day. I'm going to make it my objective to praise you, to lift up my voice and say hallelujah, to lift up my voice and say, praise God. Every single day, I'm going to make it my objective to lift up my voice and give you glory. I'm going to lift up praises to your name. I'm going to shout unto you and say, hallelujah. I'm going to say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. I'm going to make you feel good. My mouth going to speak of your praises. My mouth going to speak of your greatness. I'm going to extol the name of the Lord. I'm going to exalt the name of God because praise is comely for the upright. I'm going to keep my beauty. I'm going to keep my makeup on in front of you by praising you. That's how, that's how I keep my makeup on. That's how I keep myself in beauty. I'm going to praise you because praise is comely. That's what makes my beauty come forth when I celebrate you. I don't care how much TVs I got. I ain't going to be watching no TV all the time. I'm going to give you some praise. I'm going to let you use me every night. I, I, I ain't going to always up there be watching no TV. I ain't always going to be on no, no, no laptop, no phone. I'm going to get aside from that and praise you. Yeah, yeah. I ain't always going to be inside of no pool, swimming. I ain't going to be inside no jacuzzi all the time. I'm going to praise you. Yeah, I, I ain't always going to be up there finding other stuff. My joy going to be you. My praise going to be you. My thanksgiving going to be you. My shout going to be you. My pleasure going to be you. My intimacy going to be you. I ain't always going to be occupied with, with, I'm telling you, there's going to be a realm of finances that you're going to walk in. You ain't even going to know how much money you got. You ain't even going to know how much money you got because you're not even focused on the money no more. God going to have you live so well off that you ain't even going to be counting the money and wondering about the money. You, you won't go a long period of time not even looking at how much money you got. Somebody going to be talking to you and stuff. And you know, man, you know, we got a discount. You know, I, we give you 50% off and we could drop $40 off. And, and if you sign up for, I don't want to sign up for nothing. Just pay, I won't pay for what I got. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't want no 40% off, no 30% off, no 20% off, no nigga percent off. I don't want no, 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 no Satan percent off. I don't want nothing off. I got what I need. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. I can't. I can't. There's coming a day where financial ease going to happen. And you're going to be free from financial disease. There, there's coming a day where you're going to laugh and, 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 and laugh at what the Lord has finally brought to your eyes to see. He had already did it. But now you get to see it. But I'm telling you right now, if you operate in faith, hope, and love right now, and you recognize the personality of God towards you, you recognize the love of God towards you, you recognize the blessing of God towards you, you'll see that you're already in your wealthy place. You'll see right now, I'm in my wealthy place right now. You'll see right now, I'm in my wealthy place. Look what Psalm 66, look. Look what it says in verse 66. Verse 15 says, I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatness with the incense of rams, and I will offer bullocks with goats. 
Look, it said, verse 16, come and hear all ye that fear the Lord. Fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I want you to see what David is doing. He's saying, I'm going to step into great sowing because I recognize the great things that God has done for my soul. Sowing can't be done correctly until you recognize all the investment of God in your soul. When you understand how big the, the investment of God has been in your soul, that's how big your sowing becomes. The investment of God's seed in your soul is going to dominate the seed that's leaving your hands. Because the appreciative, the gratitude that you have taken on is giving you power to treat God like he deserves. 